Hey everybody, um, before I begin this episode, I would like to thank everyone who has subscribed to the channel up to this point because we just passed the 5,000 subscriber mark. Um, so everyone who subscribed, thank you. Everyone who has joined my Patreon, which I always um, link to in the video description, thank you for doing that. Thank you everybody who has subscribed to the Labyrinth app or purchased PDFs. These are wonderful ways to support this work. Um, it means a whole lot to me, and I'm going to keep doing this, sharing the wonderful teachings of Barry, and doing my best to organize things in a way and be transparent of how I have learned this stuff and kind of gotten to the point I am with it. Of course, I'm going to keep learning as we go, and uh, I you know, like to try to be just sharing all of the discoveries and wonderful ways of thinking as best as I can. Today we're going to look at how to improvise chord melody arrangements. So I'm not talking about arranging, I'm not talking about uh, working out beforehand and just performing that. I'm talking about how to be free and kind of play the melody and accompany underneath. And it has a lot to do with the elevator sequence that I've um, developed uh, for exploring Barry Harris's uh, harmonic concepts on the guitar. Um, I think the elevator sequence is of value to pianists too, any polyphonic instrument. Um, because it just kind of gives you a way of limiting yourself and uh, really finding predictable ways to do um, polyphony. So we'll talk about this a bit. So we're looking at polka dots and moonbeams, maybe just the first phrase, maybe a first few phrases, because there's pretty things all over the place. But um, so we're looking at... We're just going to look at that and um, look at how to harmonize it. Um, of course, uh, maybe I won't go through all of the scales examples and just get right to the things that are really important, but we need to know that this is an F major and the first part of this phrase is all F major 6 diminished. So all of that is F major 6 diminished. So I might do that in thirds, you know, or in triads. This better, huh? And then he goes, which is nice. Or any number of things, shells. So maybe I'll start a shell there, and then um, you know, all of that stuff. So we need to know F major six, and then when we get to um, this part, that is G minor seven. But I'm going to think of it as B flat major six, of course, as a Barry person. So this would be off, but I could play it as a borrowed note on the encore. Whoops. Now when we get to here, I'm on C7, and I can do any of the things that we talk about from the scale of scales. Uh, C dominant seventh with a borrowed note for the next melody note. G minor six, which is the six on the five. And both of them are chord tones. Make a little nice fill-in of the melody. So I need to know those scales of chords. I'm not going to go through each floor of the elevator. Check out episode 16 on the elevator, but I could do that with each floor, but maybe just to save time because I'm worried about this video going too long. Um, so I won't do that right now. What we need to do, the next thing I do when I'm looking and preparing myself to um, be confident with improvising uh, chord melody arrangements. It's not my favorite term. I wish it were called voices or polyphonic arrangements or something like that. But um, anyway, uh, it is what it is. But the goal is to, we learn all these chords, but then paradoxically, we just think in voices. So, you know, that's the goal. Um, but the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say to myself, well, this first melody note is an on note. It's in F major six. This is also an F major 6. It's the 6 of F major 6. Not only am I thinking on or off, I need to know what part of the F major 6 diminished scale it is. This is the 5th, the 6th, the major 2nd, major 7th, major I meant to say, the root, the 2nd, and the major 3rd, and then the perfect 5th. I need to know that stuff, and I need to know it in terms of on, on, off, on, off, on, on, which is to say F major 6, the diminished, Sorry, F major 6, F major 6, the diminished, F major 6, the diminished, F major 6, and F major 6. 
And then when I get to B flat major six, I need to know that this is this is an off note. That's a diminished note. That's the major seventh in B flat major six. And then this is the major six in B flat major six. And this is the fifth. So that's off, on, on, and then depending on how I do this, if it's G minor six, like I said before, it's on, on, that's the sixth to the fifth. That's why that sharp five is there. And then from the fifth, I know that going to the tritone minor, I have a little chromatic fill in available to me. This is what we do when we check things out, get familiar with all of this. Okay, so I need to know what part of the scale it is. And yeah, so if this were C dominant seventh, by the way, that's the third of C dominant seventh, and this is the second of C dominant seventh. If I viewed it as C dominant seventh flat five is the same, I could view it as the third of C dominant seventh and the third of the dominant seventh based off of E, which is the third of C. I've talked about that in the extended family channel episode. Um, I could also make it whole tone and do something pretty like that. I could go like just something simple like that. So maybe I'll be more direct. And then stuff like that is pretty. So this is just kind of familiarizing myself with the on and off of each note and where it is in the scales. And then I'm going to do elevator stuff for starters. And the elevator gets, gets more and more subtle as we do it. So it's not just one thing or another, but we have to learn it in stages. And then you become more and more free. There's two ways to talk about the elevator. One is the didactic way, which is where I'm going to talk to you in ways that you can follow if you've been looking at the elevator. So I could say, do a third, do a triad, or do a third, yeah, do a triad. That'll keep my bass in the same place because it goes from on, skips over the off. If I were to do this triad and then shell like that, that would go outwards. I could go do a third, do a triad, and then a shell, and another shell, and then go octave chord and out to drop two. And that would communicate to you something that you could do if you understand your elevator. And, um, you know, from episode 16. But the way I'm doing it when I'm improvising is I have... Each one of these floors of the elevator has kind of a feeling to it. So all the thirds are on adjacent strings. And they're either, they generally are either on, both notes are on the same fret or the higher note is lower. And every floor of the elevator has kind of this physical muscle memory, kind of like air guitar. If you were to air guitar a third as opposed to a triad, as opposed to a drop two, as opposed to an octave has a certain feel to it. And that's what I'm using. When I'm, when I'm improvising, I've memorized those feels and I've practiced the scales and I'm just thinking, well, okay, come on. I wanna go so, And then I want my bass to go up while I do this, so I know the feel would be to a shell. And then maybe I'll do another shell. And then I'll do another shell. And then maybe I'll go out. And I know that going out to give me an octave. If I wanna go out, that means, whoops, this goes, and this is gonna go down, so that means, the kind of air guitar feeling is that. So that's how I practice it. So it's the didactic versus the actual. But we're going to use the didactic to talk, but don't let it confuse you that uh, that's the way I'm thinking about it when I'm improvising, which what we're aiming at again is to do this in real time. So let's look at some options just in this phrase here. Um, so, and you can kind of like try these out and you can try others. Um, for one, just uh, maybe no parallel motion except for the first thing. So I just I just stayed on the same harmony, it sounds nice. And then I'm gonna go out, contrary motion, completely all the way, which I don't do as often. So that was, I ended up, triad went to shell because I'm going, I'm just keeping the same harmony and that's what happens there. Then I go out to an octave chord. The way I played it, because I'm using my right hand kind of to uh, pluck different strings. I'm skipping the third string because I kind of like the sound, but I could have played the third string. So that's fine, but um, I kind of like doing stuff like that. And then, so I went, this is shell, octave, drop two, drop three, drop two and four. But I could have gone 
Shell, shell, octave, drop two, and another drop two, and another drop two. I'm skipping a string, but I still think of it as drop two. You know, any number of things. You need to know which floors are adjacent. I can skip over a floor. Watch this. So, I'll do this. That's pretty. Now, now I'm going to skip a floor. I'm not really thinking it that way. And then, because what I want to do is have my bass go, da da di po do. So I skip over a floor. But again, if you explained to me in the didactic terms, I'd be slower at doing it. If you told me whatever I did there, I, I don't know. I have to think it through. Here's a shell, octave, drop two, and then I skipped over the drop three to a drop two and four, and I moved the drop two and four up by parallel motion. But the way I'm thinking about it when I did it was I'm thinking, from here I know that I want, that's this bass note, and I want to go do instead of do do do, I want do do do. So I'm seeing what, if I'm going to have this melody here, to go down to that floor and I'm just again that's the general muscle memory feeling and then now I'm doing a borrowed note on top of a drop what is essentially a drop two and four I go drop two and four is what I went up to it's really organic really when you look at it there's so many things I'll just throw some options at, at you tones minor and then and I did the six on the five sounded pretty to me I don't think I've done that one before but it's nice but I'm just gosh what was that so I know I went to a triad there and then I went shell shell see it sounds cooler the voices no one's gonna just go down 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 over and over again or up 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 if they're in an ensemble and I'm thinking like an ensemble so I practice a lot of this organic stuff. I don't go squeeze box because nothing musical comes from that if you only do that. That's a, a thing to practice. And let's look at, um, let me, before I get ahead of myself, let's back up to something I have my students do a lot is this type of thing. Check it out. So in order to kind of, you know, one thing you got to do is you got to practice each floor. And I'm just going to, you know, all of that stuff. That was thirds and then we have to be tried. <laughs> All of that, just moving up the scale. You gotta do that with everything, you know? So you gotta do that and drop. With shells, I switch between high and low shell, everything. But then what's good to do is this. We have to practice summoning. So I'm gonna just play the melody. But I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna summon a drop two. I'm gonna summon a third. So I'm gonna try it. So I'm gonna uh, a shell. What about this? Is uh, so I already did. I already did drop two. Whoa, well, I can't do it. That's a drop two and four. And then what am I missing? Is a uh, um. There we go. That's a drop three. So summoning these things, I apparently need to practice summoning a drop three when F is on top. So in other words, what I'm thinking of is the top note. Oftentimes I've talked to you guys about the bottom note because that's a nice way to think when you're just doing harmonic motion and you know it's a go-to, but I think in every voice, I've told you that before. But now I'm thinking only of the top note and putting stuff underneath. So really when I'm doing this, if I'm, accompanying myself like a pianist in a way this is my melody and I am harmonizing you could say with a drop three but really I'm thinking of it as just these bottom notes you know which I might do any move them out I see this fifth that's in here and I see that it goes up to a fifth and out to six was kind of junky baby. And then you know, I'm 
I'm thinking of accompanying the melody. So that's a really valuable thing. And so you can do all these kinds of motions. You can Anything in the elevator is going to be predictable. And you can skip over, you can go out, you can go parallel, you can go down. But then also, and this is why I like shell chords, you can do stuff like um, when you have time. So like say here. So I can go like... Um, I don't really have enough time. So, something like that. So that would be, I'll just take that little part and then I went like this. Or I did this. See, that's all. I'm just seeing like this. And then I guess I am putting the melody there. But if there's more, when you have notes that are just held out for a long time, you can really do stuff uh, underneath by seeing this accompaniment and then taking the bottom part and seeing just what it is. So if it's an octave chord, this is a shell underneath. And I can move that shell around. I can, I can move that shell into a triad. See? These options. Just showing you motions are available in all kinds of wonderful ways still thinking of the elevator I'm a big fan I try to say this to you guys really clearly I I'm not I, I practice all, a lot and I and I improvise a lot in my practice and I just never leave this Barry Harris way of thinking not for a second because I can find every note um, I can I can explore and find new things and no one has shown me any any um, uh, weakness in in Barry's teachings uh, or anything that's lacking. So until I see that, I'm happy, you know, and I'm having so much fun, and I want you all to have fun doing this. But um, so so I guess the point is that we need to practice being able to summon each of these elevator floors underneath any note, in order to be able to improvise chord melody arrangements. And we have F major six, and then you have. This beautiful off note in B flat major six, I'll do, um, I like this, I'll do this one a lot. This is B flat major six, a drop two, but I'm using the elevator to borrow three notes. I've talked about this in the episode, taking the elevator to borrow from the neighbors. So what it means is, drop two goes inwards, the voices move into each other, to an octave chord. What I'm gonna do is take a drop two, keep the bottom note of a drop two, and take the, the top three notes, of that octave and that makes three notes that are borrowed that will then resolve if I wanted them to in opposite direction two notes in one direction and one note in the other direction so it's some dense counterpoint but this time I can also what I do now is I take this triad and I see it as a third and a third so isn't that neat so it's like so if I were to doing you know so many things or, or I like this checked out my uh, just performance of this video I'm doing moves like that but I have lots of variations because there's so many ways to do it so you know this thing when it goes suddenly I saw that part um, that's F major 6 once again and I know that I can go and then it goes to B flat minor 6 I could go whoops <laughs> that's pretty but this I always hit this here but that was going that's just going shell shell triad 
I could go triad shell shell. I could go triad triad shell shell and then triad. I could go triad shell um, and then third like that. That's pretty. Says. So So many things. So, it's, um, or, um, or, um, pretty stuff all over the place in this song and any song, really. It, you just have to know what the on and offs are. When it goes, suddenly I saw, that is on, off, on, off. Um, and it's going from F major 6 to um, B flat minor 6. So I will often, I'll go um, and then I'll just play this without an off because I'm going to go, because this off chord, sorry, yeah, doesn't really go to, that doesn't resolve to B flat minor 6, so it doesn't sound that good. So, um, that but the idea then is use your elevator look at your notes in your melody identify them in the scale of chords see the on and off quality so you know how to harmonize them as a default but then that's not a rule because you could always treat the off notes as borrowing or you could put an off chord underneath an on note why not you know I go like a Ah, that was a it's pretty yeah, I kind of left the melody a little bit but it's so pretty anyway that's where I'll stop today um, again thank you everyone who has joined me for this goofy ride and thank you to uh, Chris Parks for giving shout outs and anybody else who has shared on forums or anything like that it's really helpful it's so nice that we have this kind of community of interested people in continuing to explore everything that Barry Harris gave us which is just really special and uh, and just um, it's all about finding musical freedom it's not about rules and in a way of like keeping us down it's about doors that set us free um, it's the least dogmatic thing I've found in music, actually. Um, it's just when you're not used to this stuff, it may seem a little funky at first, but it's worth it. And there are so many things that you can do that it lets you do, and I haven't found anything that it stops me from doing anything. And I haven't found anything that makes me think, oh, I need to think in another way in order to get a sound or something. And if I can think less, and use my ear more and explore more, then isn't that a good thing, right? So video went a little bit long, but um, I hope you enjoy it and uh, happy practicing to everybody and I'll follow up with more soon. So take care and I'll see you soon.